Despite needing funds to build a new aquatic center to replace the failing one built in 1947, Hood River Valley Parks and Rec Board withdrew their request for a ballot measure for May 2022 after county commissioners declined to place it on the ballot. In mid-February, county commissioners Arthur Babbitts and Karen Joplin met with the parks board and staff to clarify their concerns and suggest other strategies for funding. In a previous county meeting, Karen had described her concern about using a permanent levy for both a short-term capital project as well as long-term operating expenses. She explained. Trying to understand, um, I guess, why the capital portion is smushed into an operating levy when the capital portion is a derated project that will end. And I'm assuming you're going to get a loan or something and do the pool and then use the revenues to pay off the loan, but that has an end point. Commissioner Arthur Babbitts agreed with those concerns. Uh, and so I talked, so I, I asked a separate question of finance people I spoke to, and they said, is it, uh, my question was in general, is it, is it an accepted practice to build uh, capital into a permanent rate limit? And, and every finance expert, every government finance expert that I spoke to said, no, they would not recommend that. A more pressing concern for Arthur was the way Oregon's tax control measures could reduce other county funding. This could happen because if certain tax amount thresholds for government expenses are exceeded, a compression or mandatory reduction of property tax revenues takes place. When compression occurs, dollars are taken away from operating levies first, resulting in a redistribution of the same limited revenue pie into a greater number of slices. So uh, what could happen is by increasing your permanent rate, then you result in the county, in all uh, districts throughout the county, losing the ability to use a local option levy or an operating levy as a tool. So that's the danger that basically in uh, year after next, we're gonna have to be going out with another operating levy or another solution uh, to deal with, to deal with our, our budget issues. Park Board President Anna Cavallari explained the reasoning for the combo tax rate request by citing community surveys where voters said they didn't want to be nickeled and dimed with new tax requests every few years. However, but something we encountered regularly um, in our conversations with the, what we were looking for is that the community members expressed that they wanted to have accountability measures in play so that if they were not happy with the services that they could vote no in the future. There's also um, a subset of the community that will arise when you start really putting this on the ballot and they wanna know exactly what control they will have over whether you raise the rate and what you're going to be doing with the money and being accountable to that group of, of community members is something Boy, that you. your language really needs to address. Parks board members and staff have been working on parks financing for years. So what might come next? Commissioner Arthur Babbitts presented a suggestion from County Manager Jeff Hexel. What Jeff suggested to me based on his previous experience, he ever saw an example of, uh, of a situation of something that would be uh, both eligible for and supported as a sales tax, this would be it. Uh, he had suggested that, uh, that, that, uh, that that be put on the table for discussion. Arthur went on to say that in that case, a stronger argument could be made by having the Parks District eliminate the inefficiencies caused by having multiple agencies throughout the county managing city, port, county, and other parks, and bringing them all under the jurisdiction of the new Parks District with sales tax funding. You could create a pathway to that through a sales tax, and you can make some promises associated with that. Uh, and when I say sales tax, I'm, you know, it could be a food and beverage tax or it could be general sales tax, but the, the, uh, you do have the ability to levy those, uh, and those have no impact on the other taxing districts. And uh, the complaint that people always make about them is that they're going to um, uh, unreasonably affect uh, restaurants, and lodging, and therefore you're going to lose TRT money uh, in the process. And every analysis that any uh, economist has ever done says that's not the case. I've, no one's shown me a single example uh, where uh, that uh, uh, where the result has been that you destroy business by uh, by putting a food and beverage tax. So 
tax. So if that was tax. a viable option, why did the county back off of it? Well, we tried it and it was rejected. Right. And right. Why, so why didn't you try it again? I mean, if it, I mean, if it could, like, we 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 all saw that, and and you know, I, I'm not just we were we were talking about it for as a public safety, uh, uh, you know, uh, money for public safety, uh, and I think people. What I got from is that people feel safe. Uh, I'm not telling you it's going to be easy. I'm not going to tell you it's going to win. So the the suggestions that we have on the table are shoot for a sales tax and separate our permanent rate levy, um, the dissolution reformation uh, strategy from an operational levy and try to do one or the other first, um, which is Phase risky them. because one passes, the other one doesn't, we're hosed. This video was presented by Protect Our Parks Hood River, a nonprofit 501c4. We appreciate the efforts of all the parks employees, parks district board members, and elected officials in trying to find a fair and equitable way to fund our local parks.